Hi, and welcome to a very special edition of Waveform Science. I am your host, as always, Jeff Hagan. I am uh, not in the laboratory today, as you can tell. I'm in a convention hall. I'm in uh, Las Vegas at the Renewable Energy Plus convention. Uh, I've been invited here by Bluetti. They've got a, a booth set up, and they're going to be taking a look at the EP800 and EP900 power stations, the new whole house ones, that I, I even haven't seen yet. So they've got those and a few other things as well to look at. So we're going to go check out their booth and see what they have. So a couple of disclaimers ahead of time. As always, I am not paid to make these videos. Uh, the Bluetti does not pay my travel. They don't pay my airfare. They don't pay me coming here. They don't pay for my food. Uh, they did uh, arrange to have me have access to the convention so I could go talk to them. So they did pay for whatever, whatever it is that they had to pay for that. I wasn't told. Um, so there is that. And secondly, um, just a disclaimer ahead of time, folks that are expecting a lot of technical testing, uh, I'm not going to be hooking up meters to the devices that are in the convention hall. Uh, while that would be uh, somewhat hilarious, um, it would also be a little weird. So we're not going to get a lot of charts and graphs right now. We're, we're doing more of a first look at the device. I'm going to get as much information as I can about it so that we can see, you know, kind of what they're releasing and what we're in for. Um, and we might take a look at whatever other products they have at the booth. I haven't been there yet, so I don't actually know what they've got. So this will be kind of fun. So let's go check it out. The first task of the day was to find the Bluetti booth. Luckily, they bought a gigantic poster on the wall that has their booth number right next to the entrance. The conference itself is huge. 27,000 attendees, 1,500 plus companies showing off their wares. In my particular case, because Bluetti bought me the pass to come in, it wouldn't really be ethical to show the other companies, so we're just going to focus on the Bluetti booth. Hello folks, I have arrived at the Blue Eddy booth and I have found Ilya. Hi Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So, for folks who don't know you, what do you do for Blue Eddy? Hi guys, I work in Blue Eddy, I'm in marketing. I also do live streams. Uh, maybe you, you saw some of my live streams. And we are here in Las Vegas, Nevada, just displaying our products and uh, attracting more people to our beautiful brand. Very good, very good. Yeah. So I've got two easy questions to start you off before we start looking in detail at the products at the booth. Uh, first one, uh, of Blue Eddy's current model solar generators, which one's your favorite? Uh, it's a good one. You know, I would probably go for AC180. 180? 180. Yes. Very nice. And that is a very, very good solar generator. I've done a review video on it myself, uh, but that's another video. All the details. So which one is your favorite solar panel and why? Okay. so. My favorite solar panel is PV200, and the reason why is because it is compatible with both smaller power stations of ours and bigger power stations. So you can connect a couple of them in series for bigger power stations, and you only need one for anything like EB3A or EB55 or EB70S. Yeah, uh, and by the way, uh, for folks watching this, I, I agree this with him completely. Um, I myself have a number of the PV200s, and I get those in, in spite of the fact that I could get the bigger ones, because the smaller ones work on both the small power stations and the big power stations. You can put them in series to make them work on the big ones. That's it's very right. good. All right, very good. Thank you for your time. And next Thank we're going to go take a look at all the products that are at the booth. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Inside the booth itself, they had everything they make, basically. EB3A, EB55, EB70S. These are all live units. They had AC-180 and an AC-60B80 combo unit available. That was kind of around the corner there. They had an AC-200 Max B-230 combo hooked up to a microwave so that you could heat up your food. An AC-300 stack was running a coffee maker, and a number of people commented that they were really the only company using their own products to make the coffee. They had an AC500 set up running a refrigerator full of uh, cold beverages. Uh, they had five batteries on this one and it was hooked up to a timer to show how long it had been running. Uh, they had just started the timer in this image. The uh, batteries, interestingly, uh, still had quite a bit of charge on them at the end of the conference. This particular video section is from uh, middle of day one, I think. Next we're going to take a look at some products that aren't out yet.
and let me call out, uh, they didn't actually have any of these products. Um, none, none of these have actually been announced. They had some, uh, some empty plastic boxes that looked like solar generators that had nothing inside, and they had some brochures. I did attempt to ask the product management team about these particular devices, but there was uh, little to no information that they could give me that I could actually release to the public because, again, these devices have not been announced. So in lieu of saying nothing, I think it's far better for me to actually show you what they were publicly displaying at the uh, booth, and uh, we can make of that what we will. First, we had a device labeled B80P, and as far as I could tell, it's a B80. Um, I didn't see anything that led me to believe there was any difference. Uh, next one down, an AC180P. Again, looks the same as an AC180, but the battery capacity was marked a little bit bigger. Interesting. Uh, they had these blue boxes here. Those were retail packages, um, assuming that that means these devices will be sold at retail, I guess. Uh, an AC60P, again, specs are the same, except the battery seems to be a little bit larger. And moving down from that, we've got a new one. I've never seen this one before, an AC70P. We're going to look at that in a minute here. Uh, and again, we've got another uh, retail box uh, for the B80. What it says on the outside of the AC70P is that it would have a 1000 watt inverter, an 864 watt hour battery, 12 to 58 volt solar input at 10 amps, um, interestingly using an XT60 connector, two USB-C ports, and a built-in charger. Um, I know nothing about it beyond what you see there. Uh, same thing here, this is a brochure for the AC70P, again it's just got the same information. Next, AC2AP. Again, I have no information other than the fact that they have a brochure with that name on it. Uh, it says it's 11 pounds, 200 watt solar input, kind of, sort of looks EB3A-ish, but uh, hard to say much about it beyond that, other than the fact that it exists. Um, AC200LP, um, that looks like an AC200. Um, it is orange, um, and it's got the same output power that the other ones do. Um, this one is brand new, AC240P, never heard of it before. It looks like uh, two 3 kilowatt inverters can be linked together to make split phase. It looks like it has support for external batteries, and it says available January 2024 on the brochure. Beyond that, I have no information. Um, they said that they didn't have anything themselves either, so that's, it is what it is. The biggest device they were showing at this show, and certainly the biggest device Blue Eddie has ever made, uh, would be the EP900 or the EP800. Uh, sitting on top of a tower of B500 5 kilowatt each per battery batteries is the EP900 head unit. Um, they've previously released that both the 900 and the 800 will do split phase a la 240 volt output native to the device itself. Uh, the 800 that they had was set up in front of sort of a diagram of how to hook it up. But there wasn't a ton of information out in the literature. But in the case of this particular device, the Bluetti product managers were okay with talking about it. All right, we are here at the Bluetti booth with Mike from Bluetti. How's it going? So, Mike, what do you do for Bluetti? Yes, so I'm a, a account manager and a technical specialist for Blue Eddy. Excellent, excellent. So you guys are doing a big push this year on new products, the EP800, EP900 units. Yes. So what are they in general? Yeah, so just a general overview. They are going to be residential energy storage systems. So it is going to be a modular system with the inverter packaged up. And modular, you can add or take away batteries up to about 20 kilowatt hours. 20 kilowatt hours. And a re average residential house, by the way, for reference, is between 10, or 20, between 10 and 20 kilowatt hours per day, which means when this is fully built out, it could support the full usage of the average house, which is actually pretty, pretty good on the sizing there. Yeah, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. Absolutely. So um, the EP800, EP900, um, who is the customers for this? Who's going to get these? Yeah, so uh, the customer base is... Uh, expected customer is going to be someone that is, uh, you know, trying to save money on their electricity bill. Whether it's uh, you're doing peak shaving or like you have time of use rates with the, uh, you know, higher electricity cost during a specific time, 
also if you have like solar panels and uh, existing solar and you want to just do self-consumption, let's say with California, the new net metering standard, uh, you're gonna get a lot less and you'll save a lot more money if you use batteries to save all that energy. Very good, very good. And one last thing, I noticed that there are two models. There's an 800 model and a 900 model. They're both on the market at the same time. They both seem to use the same battery. That they do. So, what's the difference between the 800 and the 900? Why would you want one versus the other? Yes. So the uh, besides you know very like differences in like numbers, a little bit of power. The primary difference is the EP900 is going to be able to backfeed into the utility grid. So you're going oh. to be get the uh, uh, you know you get the payment back from the utility from sending it back to the utility grid, and you can time that as well with the EP900. Otherwise, very, very similar products, uh, but EP900 is going to be a lot more uh, for the customer who does not have existing solar. EP800, if you have, especially in California, you're grandfathered into the uh, NEM2, the net metering standard. Uh, with the EP800, it does not feed back to the utility grid, so that is going to be a very, very good use case. Um, also off-grid, like, like cabins. <laughs> yeah, we can't forget about those. those can't forget about that. Yeah. Very, very important, yeah. Very good. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate yeah, it. It's a pleasure. While I couldn't hook any meters up to it, I did convince them to take the covers off the EP-800. This, by the way, is a fully live and active unit. So on the side here, we've got some solar inputs. We've got a solar disconnect switch. We've got some communication cables. And then just the battery cables. And by the way, these are L connectors. They're low profile. They don't stick out the side. They're short. Uh, also, by the way, they're short. The only way you can put this together is by stacking it up. There is no putting it side by side. Uh, the other side of the device has um, some connectors that appear to be for communication between multiple devices. I, they were not specific to me on exactly what these do. Uh, but there are some cables on the other side. And you can see that this is actually hooked up here uh, the power coming out of it because they were running a dryer uh, an electric dryer um, sitting there on the showroom floor just just cuz uh, they did give me some diagrams on how things could be hooked up uh, this first one this is your primary setup so you've got the solar panels going directly into the AP 900 uh, that's assuming you don't have solar and that's running then into your main panel. So then when the utility goes down, you're running directly off the EP900, and the EP900 is recharging directly with solar. This second connection diagram is for an EP900 or an EP800. By the way, this one is more for the 800 than the 900, but it works with both. Uh, where you already have an existing solar install. Um, with an inverter already installed on your house. In this particular case, you'll notice that the sub-panel from the solar inverter is going into the backup port on the EP900, which means, by the way, it will charge from either the grid port or the backup port. In this particular case, the solar panel and the solar inverter is running on the microgrid that's coming out of the EP900 that is then powering your essential loads. And your inverter load then is then not feeding back to the grid anymore. So if you have existing solar, you can set it up such that it is connecting the, uh, uh, the solar panels directly to the EP900 and then no longer back feeding. Uh, additionally, there's a, a one more diagram that unfortunately I don't have an electronic copy of where they put a transfer switch um, between the output of the inverter, the grid, and the sub-panel that goes into the uh, EP800 or EP900, in which case then you can flip a switch and your solar will either connect directly to the grid and backfeed as it had before with existing solar. Uh, or if the uh, power goes out and your solar turns off, you can go flip that switch and now your solar that is on your roof will recharge the EP800 that, by the way, now will not backfeed. That second graph, which unfortunately I don't have an electronic version of to show, is how I think the vast majority of people who have existing solar are going to wind up having this hooked up. Um, more details on that when I get them. And that's all we have for today. As always, I am not paid to make these videos. I make them because I enjoy them. Um, and as long as folks continue to watch them, I will continue to make them. 
I will leave you off with an image of the army of forklifts that it took to put this together. Uh, this was behind the convention hall, and there's just a line of forklifts going off into the setting sun. Have fun, everybody.